are tracking our own ice catastrophe as some of the coldest air of the season migrates across the continental United States along with several other snowstorms. Will they impact your neighborhood? I'll let you know coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome to the Weather Nerds YouTube channel. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski and before we get started we always like to welcome all our new subscribers as we continue to grow. Yeah, we're currently up to 2,651 subscribers, and if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? We've got 97% of you who haven't done it just yet. Why don't you consider it? Just please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted on future content when I do some new postings. And uh, go ahead and leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, as it helps with the YouTube algorithm as we try to reach a bigger audience. Now, this map next to me, you see the snow cover map has definitely been increasing across most of the United States, and we have more snow coming our way. And we have a lot to talk about this edition, so let's talk about what you need to know. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the latest climate outlook as we're going to be tracking the coldest air of the season coming in across the continental United States. We're going to talk about who will be getting the worst of it and uh, where you can expect that. And then we're also going to be tracking a couple more snowstorms and even some getting into areas into the deep south, potentially, that don't normally see snow. And then finally, we're going to talk about a January thaw. I'm expecting as we take a look at the North Atlantic Oscillation, I'll show you the change in the weather pattern we may see at the end of the month. So plenty to talk about. Let's go ahead and take a look at that latest climate outlook. So the big major storm system that's impacting the United States here on the 9th of January is going to be responsible for kind of opening up the floodgates as we're going to see uh, the significant cold air. We're talking about some very, very cold air coming down out of Canada. We're talking about temperatures running below zero. So as we go ahead and zoom in here a little bit closer, you can see where the big bulk of the below normal temperature is obviously going to be right through the middle of the country here. And the only area that we're going to see maybe above normal temperatures is out here in California, out on the West Coast, as they get a little bit of a break here from the, some of the storm tracks. And it looks like this will continue into days 8th to the 14th. So we're going to go all the way out from the 16th to the 22nd, still looking at below normal temperatures for a big chunk of the country, except for areas out toward the west, uh, running with above normal temperatures from California and getting into some of the Intermountain region uh, right through there. So uh, it looks like we're gonna see chilly conditions at least through the 22nd for now. Now, as far as the precipitation outlook is concerned, uh, this initial outlook here, we got that cold air coming in, and you notice that we've got above normal precipitation here in the south, and uh, that'll be one of the areas of concern and maybe some winter precipitation getting into areas of the deep south. I right now, it doesn't look to be anything major, but we're gonna show you the specifics on that in just a second. And then once the major cold gets settled, in, uh, it looks like we're going to see drier conditions across most of the country here, uh, especially here across the east. It does start to get a little more active back out toward the west. You see above normal precipitation back out here uh, for California, heading up to Idaho, Montana, and some of the intermountain regions uh, getting with the above normal precipitation. So it uh, looks like we're in store for some cold temperatures. We are going to get some drier weather to move back in here. Uh, but the question now is going to be with the colder weather moving in, where exactly are those projected snowstorms? We still have several uh, storms to kind of track before things begin to settle down. So let's go ahead and take a look at the overnight European model and see exactly where storms will be taking place. So we're going to begin looking at the European model going on late in the day on Tuesdays. We're going to take it into this upcoming weekend as we got another storm system that's going to continue to dislodge additional cold air out of Canada kind of coming down uh, through Montana and into the Dakotas. And then it's really going to set up into the middle of the country, into the Midwest, and eventually into the Southeast. So let me go ahead and zoom out of the way here as we go ahead and track this as we go forward into this upcoming weekend. Let's go into this upcoming Friday morning, and I'm going to stop it right there. And you're noticing this uh, big swath of below zero temperatures. Anything in that deep purple uh, is very cold. And if you see that whitish, grayish color, you're really getting into some serious cold Arctic air there. So watch what happens as we go into this upcoming weekend as more of the country kind of dives in with this colder temperatures uh, coming in. We're talking about some serious cold air here uh, going into uh, Sunday morning. Look how much of the country is seeing these temperatures below zero. Uh, in through here, uh, you're looking at some of these readings, 25, these are air temperatures, not wind chills, 29, 31 below zero, 23 below zero, 21 down, 17 below into Nebraska. So again, some very frigid air coming in for this upcoming weekend. And it's not through, it's going to settle in eventually into areas that don't normally see this kind of cold. Uh, look what happens as we go into 
uh, say Tuesday of next week, Tuesday morning. I mean, look at this. These are air temperatures now. Again, you're looking at minus 16 down to Oklahoma, minus 12 in Arkansas, single digits getting down near Dallas. I mean, hard freezes here across the south for sure. I mean, uh, you know, mobile homes and areas that got uh, pipes and things that can freeze very easily with this as this frontal system moves on in across the deep south on this Tuesday. And uh, it is quite bitterly, bitterly cold. And it's going to set up shop there for a little while where that cold air is really going to settle in across areas of Alabama, Georgia, and even getting into Florida. We're talking hard freeze getting down into pretty close to near near Orlando as we get into Wednesday morning. Now, the good news is, is it is moving. It's not going to be setting up shop. It's going to quickly modify as we go to the end of this model run. Look how things quickly rebound. So the temperatures begin to rebound here across the south as we head into late into the end of next week. So we're talking about heading toward the 18th of January. Things should begin to modify a little bit. But still kind of cold up here across the, the, the high area, but it does retreat back to where it typically should be sitting. Now, I want to shift gears. I want to go over to the wind chills, okay? We have dangerous wind chills with this as well. So let's look at the wind chill chart. This is the air temperature in that feels like temperature the, of the wind on exposed skin. So let's go ahead and bring this forward as we look into this upcoming Friday first. We'll take it into Friday morning. And here are the wind chills air across the Dakotas, 24 below zero, 10 below zero, uh, single digits into Iowa. So that's, that's pretty nippy, but it's going to get much worse than that as we go uh, forward in a time through the weekend as more and more of the country gets inundated. Check out some of these wind chills here across areas of Montana. And I got some uh, YouTubers up, on, up into Idaho uh, as well. 23 below zero, 48 below zero wind chill, 47 below zero wind chill there in, into Montana. I got a weather buddy of mine up that way. I'm sure he's telling all his folks to get ready for this. And uh, it is quite cold, 35 in Dakota. And you're starting to get this wind chills down into the deep south as we go into early next week. So check out these wind chills coming down to the south as that cold air really sets up here. Uh, you're getting below zero t uh, wind chills down into Texas. Uh, as we go through here, the middle of the plane is 25, 35 below zero. That's pretty close to the air temperatures, actually. Uh, but again, very cold as that frontal system moves on through. Look at this cold air here in the middle. I mean, you got wind chills here, 33 below zero there in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, 30 below zero wind chills there in early next week. So we're talking about some serious cold, probably some records being set with this. But the good news, the good news with this is that it will not be sticking around too long, maybe a couple days, and then begins to move on out. Again, you see the wind chills move on as things begin to modify as we were showing there with the air temperature. So we know we got plenty of cold air. We know we got a couple more storm systems to watch. So where is the snow chances going to be? And will we get areas in the deep south to get in on snow action? Let's go ahead and take a look at the European model precipitation outlook for the next 10 days. So we're going to begin our model late in the day on Tuesday as we say goodbye to this storm system responsible for the severe weather across the south and heavy snows across the plains and up into the Midwest. And uh, we're going to have another storm falling behind it on a very similar track. And then the one behind that one, that one's going to be further south. That'll bring its snows into the southeast and uh, could potentially become a major nor'easter for the northeast. So we got two more storms to watch with that Arctic air settling in across a lot of the country. So let me go ahead and zoom out of the way here as we take this forward into this upcoming Friday as we say goodbye to the storm system. Uh, we'll see some wraparound snows kind of tracking here across areas of Ohio and down into the Appalachians a little bit with that exiting storm system. Uh, and as it moves on out, we'll see things begin to improve across the northeast. But we're going to watch what happens here with the next storm system here as we get the snows here across Arizona and Nevada. It is this energy here that's going to come out into the plains, and it will follow a very similar track to the one we just saw. So watch what happens here. Low pressure in Oklahoma uh, coming in again across the southeast. Could not rule out maybe a marginal, maybe a slight risk of severe weather. This one does not appear as dynamic as the system that's exiting uh, today. But again, that severe risk could be there. You're seeing the snows here on the on the northern periphery of this. So you got the snows again across almost the exact same areas that are seeing snows currently uh, as we head into this upcoming weekend. So watch that snows going by. Some very heavy snows, very blustery conditions. Now, this model is taking that low even deeper down to 966 millibars as we head into your Saturday morning. So uh, notice these lines of equal pressure, very, very heavy uh, high winds will be across here, so some blizzard-like conditions expected there 
as uh, that continues throughout the day on Saturday. Also getting a pretty neat, decent storm system out here on the west coast as well with some heavy rains and some snows moving into the Sierra Nevada with that storm system. And it's that storm system energy that we're going to watch that will be tracking more suddenly. As we're opening up the floodgates, folks, we're getting that cold Arctic air following it behind this next storm system uh, settling on in. And this, as a result of that colder air, and it's heavier, the path of the jet stream is going to shift further south. So that area of low pressure, the next storm system is going to be further south. So watch what happens as they go forward into early next week. So you see the snows begin to erupt across areas of Oklahoma. We've got some very cold air already in place. You see the wintery mix in there as this is a little bit further south. Uh, because of the cold air that's settling on in, and we get the snows in areas that don't typically see it. So by Monday afternoon, you're seeing some heavier snows across areas of Ar Oklahoma into parts of Arkansas, Tennessee, and uh, some thunderstorms right along the Gulf Coast potentially there. And we get heavy snows into areas of Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, as this begins to move on off. Stays mostly rain event across Georgia, Alabama. But again, and some very heavy snows here across areas of uh, of West Virginia and searching back into Tennessee, sending right through the mid-Atlantic as this is going to shift up this way and really bomb out as it starts to exit the East Coast here, at least according to this latest data here, as this moves on up to 99 millibars, a significant snowstorm for the interior again. Uh, this one looks like it could be uh, heavier than the one we just had this past weekend, uh, but this thing really bottoms out and drops to 967 millibars. That's like a Cat 2 hurricane here. Uh, but this is, again, uh, again over a week away. Uh, so this is going to change a little bit. As this exit on out, things will begin to improve. Uh, but again, the deviation of this track, and I want to back this up a little bit here. This track, if it shifts in, in any way, wherever that snow falls, it's also going to shift. If the low is further north, it, the snow will be further north. If the low is a little bit further south, it's going to be further south. So this is something we'll watch very closely, especially for folks across the southeast who are not used to dealing with any kind of winter precipitation. Let's switch over to the snow totals. Let's go ahead and see where the projected snow totals are. Again, when I talk about snow totals, anything about two to three days out, I'm pretty good with. Anything beyond that, we're basically looking at a projection because the reason why is because any change in the course of, the, of that track of the low can make a significant difference. So what you're seeing here initially is the snows from the exiting storm system uh, that's impacting the areas as of Tuesday and will be exiting into Wednesday. So as I go forward into time, we're going to watch that next storm system uh, come on in. It's going to dump snows right on top of the existing ones. So you see some of these snow totals in here, 26 inches. Uh, 28 inches. So if they have any snow melt, boy, they're going to have a lot of snows here across near Chicago, uh, getting into Lansing, uh, not too far from Detroit, obviously, uh, looking very snowy indeed. Then we look for the one for early next week. This is where things get a little bit more fun. As you see, the heavy snows there across areas of Arkansas. So we're talking about areas down in here that don't typically see a whole lot of snow. Uh, getting in on the action on this. So we're getting the snows into areas of Mississippi, I mean, clipping extreme northern Alabama, and then this thing moves into the mid-Atlantic, and then eventually into the northeast with some significant snows up that way uh, with that big nor'easter going into there. So again, right now, uh, the major cities like Atlanta, Birmingham, areas down into this area, you're missing out. It's just to your north, but any change in that track will dictate exactly where that snow is going to fall. So over the next uh, 7 to 10 days, look at all this snow here uh, covering a big part of the country. I did a video uh, a couple days ago talking about snow again, and this is basically continuing that trend here with the snow forecast across the eastern half of the United States. All right, I've been talking about a potential January thaw once we get past this. Let's go take a look at that North Atlantic Oscillation and see what it's showing as far as a potential break from Old Man Winter. So what we're looking at right here is the North Atlantic Oscillation. And just a reminder on this, when we're in a negative phase, that's when we get the colder uh, temperatures across the United States. It's typically when we get the more active storm track. And you can clearly see in here that we are definitely in a negative uh, phase right now. This is the neutral line, the zero line up here. So when it's in a positive phase like we were for most of December, it was fairly quiet, weak storm systems, and not 
overly cold. So we've got a cold conditions and a very active storm track. But look what's happening here as we go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here. And you can see uh, the trend is heading northward. So we're going up to the north here, uh, heading up to a neutral phase. I don't know north. Let's just say it's heading more to a neutral phase. So what that means is that we should see temperatures begin to moderate across a lot of the country. And we were kind of seeing that on the tail end of the model run going out 10 days. And I see the storm track also settling down. So as we get towards, say, the 23rd to the 30th of the month, I see uh, temperatures being uh, a little more moderated. Uh, we'll see more of the, most of the cold air staying up to the north and maybe the storm track, which has been very, very active here the last, uh, say, week or so, will begin to settle down. All right, then let's go ahead and wrap things up for this edition. So with all that cold air coming, we've got multiple snowstorms. We know this map over here, which is snowing the snow depth, which has been increasing across the nation, is going to continue to change as old man weather settles in. But the good news is I think we at least get a little bit of a break as we head toward the end of the month. That's your latest update. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, uh, please consider it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for alerts on future content. And leave me a thumb up. Give me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If there's some things you'd like to see uh, added or some improvements, as always, please, you're always a pleasure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. I try to respond to as many folks as I can. And that's your latest update. You guys take it easy. We'll see you on the next edition. Until then, be safe out there and be good. Bye-bye.